the right place and also give us a chance to use our own resources more efficiently. And frankly, we uh, credit the Mill Communities Left Behind for the success that we've had at Banff Ledbury Community. It's really improved the fabric of the community, in fact, paved the way for us to then move in and invest money fixing the buildings and engaging the community further. I can tell you that it's instilled them with a great sense of pride in their community, and it's something that we feel is a model upon which to build. So in our Healthy Communities Initiative, we intend to continue working with our partners using that model because we know that it does work. The question is, how can all this be possible in diverse neighborhoods? Abid John, the Community Development Framework Coordinator, does not think this is rocket science. We know that none of our communities are from us. If one community can do it, all the others can as well. All that we need is just the right tools, consistency, and, and patience to achieve the key milestones. And the milestones are engaging communities in neighborhood assessment, ensuring residents' participation in asset mapping, local level action planning, implementation and evaluation. As it's expanded across the south, I think we've also seen some changes in some of the other communities as well. Um, we've got some communities now uh, where the, the no communities left behind have just started to enter in that community and we already started to see some changes. Good afternoon and welcome to a special broadcast of All in a Day. We're coming to you live from the middle of Russell Heights in southeast Ottawa. Coming up this hour, the familiar story. Why did you select this community? as being a neighborhood where you wanted to run a project well, of this kind? I selected this community and Confederation and Hetherington and Banff Ledbury because that's where a program called No Community Left Behind was working. And I think you've heard other things about this program. The idea is community development, but letting the residents lead mm -hmm. and working in conjunction with all the services. And so they were working here already and there were youth councils set up here already and they were very keen to do a project like this. Right. Flexibility of the NCLB place-based approach has also been demonstrated by its successful implementation in Vanier. The same community engagement process was followed with some neighborhood-specific changes and residents-led initiatives. The difference is obvious. Within three years, the community and partner agencies demonstrated their success and won the Ontario Association of Chiefs of Police Community Mobilization Award in 2009. What stands out is the integration of isolated community development activities and the effectiveness of the neighbourhood-based approach. You have the overall goal, definitely, but at the same time, you're building it block by block and not trying to, to build so people aren't overwhelmed. They're building on successes and not on long-term projects, but small projects that are tackling the long-term goal of having a better neighborhood, a better place to live. And we call them micro-communities because even in Vanny, even though Vanny is not very big, uh, there are differences from sometimes street to street. Mm -hmm. So. If you get small streets, different streets involved, uh, and then it has a, a ricochet effect where people say, yeah, we want to do that. How about us? Yeah, and yeah. there's this pride. Of course, the job is not without its challenges. Implementation of this process depends on existing conditions in a community. The first year of putting this process in place is always challenging. It needs lots of legwork on part of the community staff, and it needs lots of effort in bringing community members and service providers together on the same page. In the beginning, it's very, very difficult and hard. Community members didn't see the benefit of uh, coming and uh, participating. So that when they saw the uh, commitment of part of the CH, police and others, uh, they saw the change, so more and more people came forward and joined the community. Uh, tell us about your experience with the Tenants Association. Is it always smooth sailing or...? No, of course not. Everybody, we all have problems, different personalities are going to clash and some of us don't know each other, so whatever. No matter, in life there's problems, right? So we try and deal with it. 
We normally do get it dealt with, so yeah, if so we say things up front right away, then it's dealt with right away. Bringing together all of these components means no one is reinventing the wheel. Everything that makes up this form of community engagement is taking place already, in some form or another, in the communities and service agencies. The place-based planning process aims to be all-inclusive and looks at each community as unique. Specific concerns are dealt with appropriately using creative approaches. The result? Achieving desired outcomes. For instance, in a community where, only a few years ago, residents were living in isolation, today those same residents marched in the streets to celebrate their success in joining hands for community building. What we just saw was the reason why United Way is so supportive of the No Communities Left Behind model. And in fact, one of the reasons why we were around the table at the very early stages. It's important for residents, for citizens, for donors, for business leaders, for community leaders to be involved in their community and know that they can actually have impact, that they can make a difference in their lives and the lives of other people. And the magic and the beauty of this model is that it allows residents to be involved, to feel that they can actually take control, that they can focus on their neighborhood, that they can build their own community in a way that's relevant and meaningful for them. The City of Ottawa has been instrumental in leading the way. By putting together a Community Development Framework, CDF, it has provided system-level support to communities by tailoring the NCLB strategy to address the unique needs of each neighbourhood. This is another piece of the success story. The issue has always been that have our services truly been focused in the right areas in terms of establishing healthy communities and we started thinking about how do we get our services to work better with the community and one of the things that we discovered in um, Southeast Ottawa with, with the No Communities Left Behind model is that there was a, an incredible um, work being done in terms of bringing together community partners and city services um, and there, it was a real success story and we thought how could we help um, get our services 